What's up YouTube, Steve-O back at it again. We're gonna be changing this front headlight and the front grill today. I went out to the junkyard and picked up the headlight and the front grill for $60, which wasn't too bad. And I'll show you how to take all of this off and take out the headlight and put the new headlight in. Shouldn't take too long. It only took me about 10 minutes at the junkyard, so it shouldn't take no more than 20 minutes to do it right here. So let's get at it. All right, YouTube, I got the headlights out. As you can see, I got my shop light laying in there. This headlight case was just completely destroyed. As you can see, it's just all the parts. Just fucking, once I was taking it out, it just fell completely apart. That's what it's supposed to look like. I mean, some strange stuff happens at shops when once you pay for your stuff and then you go to pick it up and everything's broken and I try to act like that's how it came but if you can see in here those are the two 10 millimeter bolts that's holding the bumper on and then there's also two 8 millimeter bolts that's under this fender that bolt it to the top fender to keep it stabilized and it's repetitive on both sides two 10 mil on this side two 8 and then the whole grill comes out. Plus there's two star bolts on the top here, which are Torx bit, I think they're 13s, Torx bit 13. Two on each side, I'm missing one over here. I don't know where, where that one went, but pretty straight, straight through. I mean, you have your front radiator support guards where it helps the air just flow straight into the front fan and if y'all saw my other mod video this is the front fan that this wire controls for the high speed so you can if your car is overheating you can use your multimeter to find which pin is the high voltage one will be six and one will be a constant 12 and you want to bridge those two together to make it be on the high speed circuit so once you do that, then the front fan will continuously be on, or you can cut it on and off with the switch, however you want to do it. You can even just bridge it with just a piece of wire and just leave it on all the time with the key on. That's the only thing. It has to be either accessory on or with the engine running, and it'll always be on. So I'm going to take this front kidney grill holder out, and then show y'all from there okay youtube so here you go the grill is fully disassembled taken out i just gotta take out my kidney grills put the new grill on there i might wipe some of the stuff down and maybe paint it because i'm getting a little bit of rust right here along with this where the fan shroud sits that shoots the air back to the to the alternator so I might touch some of that stuff up and get some of that stuff cleaned up but the car is pretty much rust free even though we're here in Florida here's some of the tools that you're gonna need you're gonna need a, a small flathead screwdriver or if you have the trim tools to take off the front trim on the bumper an eight millimeter socket with an extension to get the bolts on the under the fenders I, I'm using 3 8 drive because I also have the 10 millimeter 3 8 drive because those front if you can see here you have to go through this section to get to the bolt and it's a real pain if you're trying to use like I was trying to do I, at the junkyard I could just beat on it how I wanted to to get it out I, I, I wound up bending these frames so I could get mine in there and I also there wasn't a radiator in the car that I was working on so if your radiators in your car and you don't want to take it out you can use the 3 8 I found that the 3 8 slots through those holes with the short 10, 10 millimeter 3 8 drive socket and it fits in there perfect 
And uh and the top bolts are a T thirty Torx bit. Um I, I think I said it was a thirteen, yeah, it's a T thirty. And then I use the thirteen mil big socket for the front bumper and the headlights and most of the fasteners on these E36s, like most of the fastener for accessory pieces, are usually held on with eight millimeter. Because that's how that's how the head the headlights and the front face and everything it was all held on with eight millimeter bolts. So yeah, well I'm gonna go get the new bumper piece out of the truck and wipe it down, clean it up some and polish the headlight because the new headlight that I got also came from the junkyard and it's haze so I'll use some rubbing compound some cutting compound rub that in good and buff it out and see how that turns out but yeah so far so good I'll come back with a little bit more right after I get the bumper out of the truck what's up YouTube so I got the front face out here I'm using some Rust-Oleum Wax and Tar Remover. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just a great product. I got a couple of chips in this. By the way, it's green. I didn't really notice it at the junkyard because it was the only clean one that they had. There was no damage on it besides these little paint chips from the road. So I'm just going to knock some of these chips out, sand it. I'm just going to lightly sand it because there's no really need to take it down to bare metal or anything. Because it's not going to be a show car. It's the drift car, right? It's the race car. So we got the rattle can. And that's pretty much it. I don't know where my sandpaper is. I'm going to have to look for it in the shop. But for right now, I've just I've waxed and tar grease removed it. I'm going to sand it, repeat the process, and then going to paint it. Once I paint it, I'm going to I don't know, I'll probably let it sit for like 20 minutes. That sounds reasonable. And we're going to slap this thing back together and maybe do some skids. Because before my headlight, like I said, it was trash. And it was pretty much like terrible to drive on the road because it's bad enough that my windshield's all cracked. Having a busted headlight, that was kind of asking for trouble. But yeah, I got... The diff's already been installed. I didn't put a reinstall video up because it's pretty self-explanatory. Same process that you took it out, you put it back in. And I don't know if anybody ever knew it, but the process of starting my car was kind of crazy because, like everybody knows, with the E36, the ignition cylinder breaks all the time. So what I did was I installed these switches which run my, auxil my auxiliary my ignition and fuel pump and then the start button simple as that now this won't work on models with the EWS system which don't have the red label 14, 13, 413 ECU but mine came with the silver label and I swapped it. And basically all you do, there's a couple of wires under the club box that you have to splice together to bypass the EWS system. And basically all the EWS system is is an anti-theft because the BMW has a chip key and this spins freely. You can see it's got a lot of rotation in it and it broke. And it broke to the open position and I couldn't shut off my car. Luckily, I broke down right next to a BMW mechanic, and he told me that there's two small set screws on this side of the column that removes this, which you can start with a screwdriver. So, I used my multimeter and found which was the, let me get a better shot of it, which was the hot, the ignition, and the starter wire, and the accessory. And basically bridge the two with the hot the constant hot 12 volt to the switches and the other constant 12 volt to the starter and got a starter button from advanced auto parts all in all I think it cost me 
maybe thirty dollars for the switches and the start button so yeah pretty easy swap just to have push button start you won't have to have your key and you can do the same thing with the EWS system you just have to have your key to be able to start the car you'll have to put your key in the ignition for it to read the chip for the EWS system or your car won't start pretty self-explanatory EWS system chip key won't start if you don't have it but mine broke and I didn't like having to tote the key around everywhere I went plus my when I bought the car the computer failed so I got the red label 36 computer the 413 DME which they say it has higher revs and all that bullshit but who believes the internet anyway right but yeah that's where this is the computer box if y'all don't know that's where your computer is located at you can pull it out and check what label you have and if you want to do the swap basically swap out the whichever computer you have to the red label it only works with the e36 i'm pretty sure only the 325i don't quote me on that i'm not sure like i said it's just two wires under the dash i looked it up on youtube i forget uh who had it up but it was pretty self-explanatory when the guy went through the instructions he showed which wires are which and you just take them splice them together car works all the time without the chip key so yeah so i'm gonna get this stuff out here painted and then reinstalled and we'll see how it looks from there all right youtube here's the final product headlight looks clean i polished it well i didn't polish it but i used cutting compound and took the haze off of it and the bumper or i mean the grill came out looking real nice the fitment to the bumper is nice all the corners line up because i got all the screws and everything perfectly aligned it took me a little bit to get the headlights right because I didn't notice it at the time before when I did the bumper. I took the bumper off because it had a lot of scratches in it and I buffed it and sanded it and took all the scratches out of the bumper. And I took the headlights out too and polished those and I didn't notice but these screws turn when you tighten them. So be careful when you're tightening those. You want to make sure that the headlight fitment's perfect. I also got some halogen headlights for it show you what those look like sorry about the wine here let me cut that off like I said you can cut that main fan off just with a simple switch but yeah those new halogen headlights are super bright they were fifty dollars at advance so I just wanted to see what they would do had a new headlight anyway the old bulb was smashed needed new bulb so i might as well just replace both of them but yeah the footman on that's really clean it's way better than i originally thought that it would turn out you can see the fitman on the hood's perfect everything lines up Oh yeah. So if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe and like the videos and thanks for watching.